I don't have a lot to bring forth today. I've got a little bit of an exercise at the end. Um, but I want to continue on with we're new creations. Yeah. And I've had a number of opportunities this, this week to say, I'm sorry, but I'm no longer a part of that race. Yeah. Well, I'm actually not sorry. I'm no longer a part of the, the human race. I'm a spiritual being encountering a human experience, but I'm no longer a human being having a spiritual experience. So that might be your case. But it's not my case because I'm not that race anymore. And so it's recognising as soon as it starts to hit the mind, oh, wait a minute, I'm a different person. I'm a new creation. I'm a son or a daughter of the Most High God. Like I'm, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Sickness and disease does not belong. Yes. Worry, depression, anxiety does not belong. Do you know that anxiety and worry is to... Mammon, what praise and worship is to God? Matthew chapter 6. You know, he says you can't serve God and mammon. And mammon is a, a demonic deity. Um, and, it's, and so all, all down through Matthew 6, it says, take no thought. Don't you worry. Don't be anxious about this. So anxiety and worry is to mammon what praise and worship is to God. Never want to do it again. So, Father God, we just speak right now that we renounce every time yes. that we have been anxious or worried about anything. And we recognize it's not of your kingdom. But we have entertained it or partaken of it or resorted to it when we've been a little bit doubtful about your promise. And so we just repent. Yes. And we, we come out of agreement with the anxiety and the worry and the root of that, whether it was a fear that you weren't going to come through for us, whether it was an anxiety, whatever, whatever the root was, we come out of agreement yeah. and we now realign with you and we say we trust in you, God. We trust in you. We trust in your promises. We trust in you. And so um, we just repent. And, and any time that our anxiety or our worry has fueled mammon or has built an altar to mammon, we ask right now that that altar would be demolished by the fire of God, that that entity would be displaced, and that a true altar of pure worship would be risen in its place in Jesus' name. So one of the ways that we uh, resort back to Humanity is the way we think, right? And in Matthew chapter 16, Peter gets this amazing revelation. So this is a warning. When you get a revelation, watch out for the humanity that will come to contest it. So Peter gets this amazing revelation that Jesus, Yeshua, is actually the Messiah. You are the Christ. You are the Son of God. Like he gets this. And then Yeshua says to him, well done, Peter. You haven't got this from man, from flesh and blood, but you've heard this from the Father in heaven. So he acknowledges he's a divine revelation. Peter, it's going to shape your life. It will change you forever. You've got it from heaven. And so and then he goes on to teach about the ecclesia uh, and the gates of hell will not overcome it. And, uh, and that Jesus is building, Yeshua is building his ecclesia. And every day I transfer Open Heaven Ministries into the hands of Yeshua to build what he wants so that it is transformed into what he desires the ecclesia to be here in this. So I transfer for transformation. And, um, oh my gosh, he's so good. He's so good. So then he goes, Yeshua teaches that, you know, like the gates of hell shall not overpower it and, and all of this. And then, and then he goes on to explain that he's going to be crucified, that he's going to die. And Peter almost grabs him. You can almost see him grabbing him by the arm and saying, no, 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 not so. Don't let, that's not to be, Jesus. Not to be. He's, he's actually now rebuking the very one that he called the Son of God. How's that for a bit of bravado? Yeah, I recognize who you are. You're the Messiah. But no, you can't do that. Right? And, but that, and then Jesus turns to him and he says, well, hey, wait a minute. You are thinking the thoughts of a mortal. You're thinking the thoughts of a human being. 
you're not thinking the thoughts of God. So any, and, and you're a stumbling block to me, Peter. He said, you're a stumbling block. You're actually getting in my way. So I rebuke you. So we've got to recognize that the origin of thoughts that come from our humanity are usually demonic. And they will fight the revelation that you've received. Because it says in Romans chapter 8 that if that the mind of the the mind on the, that is sent on the flesh is an enemy to God and will always be an enemy to God. And so it's recognized you've got to catch those thoughts and bring them into obedience to Christ mm -hmm. before they actually get a chance to change the way we think or our reaction to something. So it's recognizing that we're different people. And as I said like two weeks ago, because this is a five or six week thing, but it's a shorter one tonight. When the, the people of Israel were taken captive and taken into Babylon in Jeremiah's time, you are taken captive. You are marched out of your own country. You are marched into another country. You are taken out of your religion. You're taken out of your social network. You're taken out of your country. You're taken out of everything that you know. You're taken as prisoners of war and established in Babylon. And what does God tell them to do? Don't think like victims. Don't think like you're a prisoner of war. I want you to recognize. So just turn to Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29, he starts in verse 1. These are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the rest of the, uh, the elders in exile and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive. So they are prisoners, captives, from Jerusalem to Babylon. And this was after King Jeconiah, also called Keniah or Jehoiakim, and the queen mother, the eunuchs, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elisar, son of Shaphan and Jamaria. I've probably got the names all pronounced wrong. Anyway, and it said, verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, and this is something that we tend to forget. We tend to think that the, the, the verses in the word are optional. Optional. Count it all joy. I don't feel like counting it all joy. I want to grumble. <laughs> forgive. Well, I don't want to forgive. They hurt me. They really hurt me. Let me stew on it just a little bit. You know, they had ten commandments in the Old Testament. Ten commandments. By the time man had finished, it was up to over 600. But they had ten commandments from God. New Testament, we have basically two. Love God, love people. But if you have a look at what we're told to do, it's over a thousand. Dakes actually says we have over a thousand commandments in the New Testament. Count it all joy when you fall into various temptations. Give thanks in everything. Um, you know, all of these, they're all commandments. They're not optional. And so he, the Lord of hosts says to these people, you might have been taken captive, but you're my people. And you are not captive. This is your situation but it has not captivated my people. And this is sometimes something that we forget. We get into a situation or a circumstance and we feel that it affects us, right? Mm. I'm really oppressed at work or this or that or whatever. And, and I, it, it just it's affecting me. No, 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 no. The situation is there, but it must not affect your spirit. It's your spirit that leads you, not your soul. It must be your spirit. And so he says in verse 4, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the captives whom he'd caused to be carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 5, build yourself houses, dwell in them, plant gardens, eat the fruit of them. He's saying, I want you to live as normal as possible in the situation that you're in. Do not allow the limitations of being a captive or being imprisoned financially, or being imprisoned by a toxic relationship, or being imprisoned by lack of work or, or a lousy work environment. Do not allow that to affect you. Live a good life. 
because it's just a situation, it's a circumstance, it will pass, it will change. But who you are will never change. And then he says in verse 6, take wives and have sons and daughters and take wives for your sons. Give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply here and do not be diminished. And so he's saying, remember what I gave you in Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, take dominion. And he says, uh, and seek the peace and the prosperity of the city to which you have caused you to be carried away captive. Pray to the Lord for it, for in the peace or the prosperity <coughs> of the city in which you live, you will have well-being. And then he says, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your false prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you, pay no attention, attach no significance to your dreams which you dream or to theirs. For they prophesy falsely, I haven't sent them. We're not concerned about that. But what I am concerned about is that we actually live according to what God is calling you to live, not according to your situation or your circumstance. Does that make sense? And so what are you thinking? What is the one area in your life that is causing you pain? And when you think about that one area, what is the dominant thought? So you've all heard this story before, but I will repeat it because sometimes there's a little bit of a resistance to this. Um, years ago, and I'm talking years ago, working full time, doing Bible college three nights a week. My kids, five kids, all teenagers. So the, the situation was, I get home from work about half past five, I throw dinner on the table, I've got to be at Bible college by 7 p.m. So clean up the dinner things, they have one school uniform each, put your uniform in the washing machine and turn it on, I'll hang it out when I get home, clean up after yourselves, I'll be back at 10, right? I get home, I walk in. Well, if they did clean up after dinner, they've had a few meals since then. A few suppers, a few snacks, whatever. Wash, the school clothes might be on the floor, but they definitely weren't in the washing machine. A couple of kids would put them in the washing machine. It's never turned on. And this one thought came, just one thought. Man, living with these kids is like living with the enemy. But I thought it was a funny, you know, like it was a little bit of a ha-ha, sort of a, I didn't attach anything of importance to the thought. It was a bit like, well, I guess that's the way it is, you know, like they're not going to help. So this, this continued and I'm getting more and more frustrated and angry and that thought is now growing legs and walking through my mind at any time and taking control until one day I said to the one child that really did help me, the one child that did everything they could to help me sort things out, and, you know, did what I asked, to that one child, the one child I should never have opened my mouth to, all of the pent-up resentment and the anger came out of my mouth onto the wrong child at the wrong time because I had allowed one lousy thought to take control to grow legs and walk through my life. Then I spent the next three months eating humble pie and apologising every time I could for what I'd done. But, you know, it's just that one thought. Just one thought. And it just expands. It takes on a life of its own. And, and, and before long, we're agreeing with it without even realising what we're agreeing with. And the Lord is saying in this new season, I am calling you forth. Arise out of the depression or the prostration or the position of life that you're in. Arise because I'm calling you to live as a son or a daughter of the Most High God. I'm calling you to live a supernatural lifestyle. I am calling you to rise up in the power of the Holy Spirit, the truth of my word, and to stand out amongst the people of the earth because they don't know the truth. They don't have the truth, but you carry the truth on the inside. It's enthroned in your heart. His name is Yeshua, and he is calling 
calling us forth, saying we can no longer straddle the fence. You can no longer say, I'm born again. I'm a brand new creation. I am fathered by God Almighty because it says in John 1.12 that he, born, he bore us. He, he birthed us. We can no longer say that and then live like the world regarding finances or health or relationships or work issues or, or anything else. We can no longer say, I am born again, spirit-filled. I'm a son and daughter of the Most High Man. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. And then go over here, oh my gosh, my back is killing me. We can no longer straddle the fence. I can't say, well, I do say, I'm born again, spirit-filled. Man, I'm on fire for God. I love the word. I do love the word of God. I love the word. And his name is Jesus. You know, he is the living word of God. I love it. Every time I open up the word, there's an encounter with Yeshua. There's an encounter with the lover of my soul. <coughs> but what good is that? And it's an eternal good. And it's a powerful good. If the next time the bill comes in, I go, oh, my gosh, I don't know how I'm going to pay this. Oh, I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm just, oh, man, the finances are really out of control. How am I going to handle this? And I worry and I get anxious, fueling the altar to mammon. But over here, I say I'm born again. We can no longer live schizophrenically, if I can say that. Both sides of the fence, because when you lose your balance, it hurts. So it's, it's recognising that we've got to be so immersed in the word of God that when a thought comes that does not bring peace, does not bring life, does not reflect truth, we are alert to it, we're awake to it. So, uh-uh, I deny you entrance into my mind, my heart, my soul, my life. I deny you entrance. You're not coming in. I'm bringing every thought into obedience to Christ. We can no longer afford to do that. Because this is a season that is coming up when God is saying, I want my people to arise and to walk in power and authority and to take dominion and to subdue and trample down what needs to be subdued and trampled down. But I also need them to be fruitful and to multiply. And that doesn't just mean marriage and children. It means your businesses. It means your finances. It means your, your influence, your significance for the kingdom. He's saying, I want you to arise. <coughs> I'm calling you forth. And we've been kind of hybrids. Is that the right word, hybrids? Hybrids. On a good day, man, I know I'm a child of God. I am a good day, born again, spirit filled. Oh, I've got, I'm a joint heir with Jesus. Everything he's got, I've got. I am one with God. I'm in him. He's in me on a good day. On a not so good day, I could be saying a few different things, which means I'm, I'm, I'm not holy dedicated, sanctified, set apart. It means that there's a whole a bit of the unrenewed soul that needs a bit of attention because it's not willful. It's just that I haven't worked on that part of my soul or allowed the truth of God's word to work on my soul because the only part of my soul that is in agreement with my spirit is the renewed mind. Mm. The unrenewed mind and the mind of the flesh does not work with me and agree with my spirit. And so the Lord is saying, I want you to arise. Oh, man, does he want you to arise. He wants you to arise and step up and step in and step out in the things that he's called you to do. But in stepping out, stepping out in the belief that, man, I can't fail. God's in this with me. I can't lose. God's in this with me. He's my father. He takes better care of me than anyone else on the planet. Doesn't matter what I face, my father takes really good care of me. He wants you to arise because he's looking for people who will walk with such authority and power and such a trust in him that when we look back, do you know what we see? Miracles, signs and wonders following us, yeah. right? We go looking for miracle signs and wonders. We go to this meeting because there's a big sign up, miracle signs and wonders, healings. Uh-uh-uh, it should come from us. 
right? We carry him. We carry his word. When I look back, I want to see miracles, signs, and wonders. I want to see the glory that that would bring from God, you know, like reveal to him. We have, there is so much... I'm telling you, and I'm not asking us to go back to Acts because that's our foundation. What I'm asking us to do is to go into the future that he's calling us into, but to go in with the power and the authority and the dominion of the almighty God to carry out what he wants done so that nations can be transformed, so that families can be put back together, so that people on deathbeds can be healed, so that things can change. But we, while we continue to think like a human being, we're not going to walk in the fullness of the power that he's got for us. That's right. That's right. That's good. That's good. There is, I don't know whether it's for you guys or whether it's just for me, I'll say it's just for me, but I am sensing an urgency to grow up. Yes. To grow up in the things of God. There's an urgency to mature in the things of God so that when people look at our lives they say man I don't know what their secret is but they're blessed everything they touch is blessed their families together there's peace in their home they're just always on top I've never seen them even when they're going through stuff I've never seen them you know words fail me but we've got to, and it's not that we get to that place. It's not a matter of works. All I'm asking us to do is to be aware of what the Holy Spirit is, is, is showing us. Mm -hmm. Hey, Suzette, you shouldn't have thought of that word, that thought. That thought was human. Oh, man, sorry, Holy Spirit, I didn't see that. Right now, I repent of that. I change, I step away. I will think in line with the word of God. How many of you feel... And I would put up both hands and both feet so don't feel alone and don't feel that you have to respond. But how many of you feel you are living way below what Jesus died to give us to live? Right? One of the problems is that we still think like a human being. We're still affected by media. We're still affected by um, whatever, whatever. We're still affected. Instead of us affecting, infecting them with truth, they, they, they kind of affect the way we think or the way we see things. I'm telling you right now, there is, a, and I don't know, like I said, the urgency is probably for me, but we need to grow up, we need to mature, but it's not by works, it's not by what we do, it's by a surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, it's by allowing the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do in our lives, it's allowing the grace of God to bring about what God wants and we work with it rather than grind. Oh my God, I've got to change. Oh Lord. Oh, it's so hard to change. I don't want to change. I'm over it. You know, all of the, the belly aching that we do. Can I use belly aching? I did. So all of the belly aching that we do about different things, all the complaints that we make, these are all not kingdom. So my children will remember, my sweet Danielle. <laughs> Yeah, I know. No, I'm, at, at the whole, the whole lot of them got the example. But when we were out and they were mucking up, there would be a little grip on their arm with just a little bit of a pinch. Isn't that disgusting? But just a little bit. And I would whisper in their ear, Philippians chapter 2, verse 14, do not grumble. <laughs> and then I'd stroke their arm. Like, you know, don't behave like that. We're in public, Philippians 2, 14, so religious. Like, I was religious. But it was ingrained, do not grumble. And we were watching, was it Myron Golden the other night? We were watching Myron. And he was talking about, why do you need to ask for wisdom, James 1.5, when Jesus is your wisdom? Why do you need to ask for it if he is your wisdom? And if he, you, that's in you, why do you need to ask for wisdom? And I thought... Good question. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah. He ties it back to James 1, 2, where it says, count it all joy when you fall into various temptations and circumstances so that you become mature and perfect as a Christian. He says, sometimes we don't know how to count it all joy. We don't know what that is in the situation we're in. Mm -hmm. That's where you need the wisdom. Mm -hmm. When you fall into various trials or situations, because in everything else you have the wisdom of God. You have the mind of Christ. 
So if I have the mind of Christ, I ought to be thinking a lot differently to what I am, right? Yes. <sighs> Seriously? Yes. <laughs> so we're going to do a little bit of a... Um, and I was going to use the scriptures out of Jeremiah, but we'll use Isaiah 61. Or 60, Isaiah 60. And I just want you to... We're just going to listen to the Lord. And then when I finish, <clears throat> we'll go straight into communion, Gwyn. And then we hand it over to Muriel for tithes. But I'm just going to ask some questions. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to hear from the Lord. And um, for, if you're sitting by yourself, just look around to who you can move to. So there will be a time when you need to talk to somebody. And I got a new Bible, not surprising, because I'm always getting books or something, but it's the complete Jewish Bible, and instead of the word faith, it uses the word trust. Yes. So we walk by trust and not by sight. Mm -hmm. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my trust. Mm -hmm. And I thought trust is a lot easier for the Western mind to get around than faith. Just trust, yeah. Just trust. Yeah. So we're going to Isaiah 60. And we might go from verse 1 down to verse 6 because who wants to see camels of provision coming into their lives? So we'll do verses 1 to 6. I've got the amplified. <clears throat> But I'm going to read this, these, these verses of scripture and then you're going to have around about 20 minutes, or sorry, 20 seconds <laughs> to talk to God about the scripture. What is it in that scripture that he's actually highlighting to you? So I'm going to read it slow and listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit just to highlight what he's saying to you. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and dense darkness all people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. And nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. <coughs> your son shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried and nursed in their arms. And you will see and be radiant, and your heart will thrill and tremble with joy. And be enlarged, because if the abundant wealth of the sea shall be turned to you, unto you shall the nations come with their treasures. <coughs> A multitude of cam camels will cover you. And in this, he's talking about Jerusalem. And the young camels of Midian and Epa, all the men from Sheba, shall come, bringing gold and frankincense, proclaiming the praises of the Lord. So in those six verses, Daniel, can you just turn the lights on, please? Do you know where the light switch is? There we go. People, so just, I'll give you 20 seconds. What phrase or what words jump out of that to you? What is the Lord speaking to you out of those verses? said.
What has God said to you about that? One word, a phrase. So turn to someone at the near you. This is not a discussion. Just share the word or the phrase that God has given you. Do not discuss it. Just share the phrase or the word that impacted you when, when you read it. You can share it with the person next to you, but do not discuss. <laughs> Margaret, uh, Suzanne, did you want to come across all? Oh. Okay, I said no discussion. You were just to share the thing. Okay. Okay, we're just going to read it again. But this time, where in your life does the word or the phrase that God gave you, what part of your life does that relate to? So let me just read it again. <clears throat> Arise. Um, rise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth and dense darkness all people. But the Lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen on you. And nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes around about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your son shall come from afar and your daughter shall be carried and nursed in the arms. And you will see and be radiant and your heart will thrill and tremble with joy because of the abundance of wealth of the sea shall be turned to you. Unto you shall nations come with treasures. A multitude of camels will cover you. So when you go back to the phrase or the word that God gave you, what part of your life is that referring to? Okay. Have you worked out, this is not a discussion, have you worked out where in your life that is relating to you personally? Okay. And if it, have a chat to, well, after we finish this, I'll hand the mic to Kurt because he just wants to share what's in the, in the Young's translation, which is really good. But uh, I just want to finish this because every scripture, like if you can get this, guys, every scripture, I know I get so excited, every scripture, every scripture is a connection to heaven. Every, every scripture is a portal that opens heaven up to you. So when you open a scripture, when you get a revelation from a scripture, what God is giving you is a portal to experience heaven in that. Right? This is not just a, something to pass the time. We are learning how to open portals in heaven through scripture. Every scripture is connected with heaven. Every scripture is a portal. So what is the Father saying to you? Take the time to listen. Take the time to think about, go over the scripture again, and then where does this fit into my life? What encounter is God wanting to give me through this scripture? Because every scripture is an encounter with Yahweh. 
Yeshua, Holy Spirit. But if we just read it or we study it and we don't expect it to be an encounter, you are robbed. Every scripture is a portal. Every scripture is an encounter. So we're learning to experience portals, encounters through scripture. Okay, so you have worked out where that phrase relates to. Now, in you guys are talkative, so I'm pulling you in. One, two or three sentences, no more than three sentences, turn to someone next to you and explain where that fits in your life. I'm going to read it again. So you've heard from God about where that scripture fits. You've heard from God, first of all. Secondly, he's shown you where it fits in your life. Now, as I read it again, we're going to ask God to show you the call to action. Like, how are you actually going to put this into, how are you going to live this out? Revelation is to be lived. So what is the call to action? Arise. Rise to a new life. Shine and be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For the light has come, or your light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth, and dense darkness all people. But the Lord shall arise upon you, and his glory shall be seen on you. And nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Mm. Lift up your eyes around about you and see. They all gather themselves together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried and nursed in the arms. Then you will see and be radiant, and your heart will thrill and tremble with joy because of the abundance or the abundant wealth of the sea shall be turned to you. Unto you shall nations come with their treasures. A multitude of camels shall cover you. What is your call to action? How are you going to live out what he's given you? How did you find the experience? Not, not mind-blowing, riveting. Why not? Yeah, well, sometimes we do sit with it. But we have to start the conversation. So sometimes we do have to sit with this. Sometimes we don't, you know, get everything straight up, but you do have to start the dialogue. And what I'm trying to get through to you is that every scripture is a portal and an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ or with Yahweh or with Holy Spirit. Every scripture, even if it's like one of those terrible ones, but every scripture is a connection with a portal, like count it all joy or even the demons believe and tremble, whatever. But they're, they're a connection with heaven, Right? And when you connect with scripture, not just as scripture, I'm just reading it, or I might be studying it or I'm meditating on it, but when you actually step in through the scripture into, into that heavenly encounter, it changes everything. So you might have just gotten a little bit today, but starts the dialogue. Peter wouldn't have got, you're the Christ, you're the Messiah, just like that. He walked with Jesus for three years. He saw stuff. He processed things. But what I'm saying is we've got to get out of the Western mindset of just looking at Scripture the way it's written and what is actually not just the function of it, not the form of it, but what is the function of it. What is the function? As I said, was it last week or the week before? You know, Westerners hold up, this is a pen. And it's got blue ink and it's, it's got a round barrel and it's blue and it, you can get it in fine, medium. or We go into the, the form of it, but for the Hebrews, this is a pen and I use it to write my ideas. Mm -hmm. 
They talk about the function. And so we need to understand that there is a function in Scripture, and one of the functions is to experience an encounter Mm -hmm. with the Lord. Mm. Want to say something? Sorry. No, do you want to say something? No. Just we are one with the Lord. Yes. So the glory of the Lord is, is resident. And on us. And on us. Filling us. All of us. Mm-hmm. We are one. Mm. You know, like a great book you can read is, uh, oh, Danny, what is it? God is it work within. What's that one? You and, and Margaret do it, Suzanne. God at work within. Who's it written by? That guy with the brain aneurysm that healed him, that got healed. Oh. Yeah, him. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. To get healed from a brain aneurysm. Yeah. Within like about three weeks or something. I know. Is that the name of the book? No. Oh. No, it's, it's God at work within, I think. Um, yes, it is, yeah, yeah, at work within. At work within, yeah. That is, if you haven't quite got the grasp of how much you are in him and he is in yeah. you and you are one, yeah. not just with him but with each other, um, that is a great book to get. Um, if we could remember the title, the author. Yes, yes Rick Osborne. That's at work within. At work within. That's a, that's a good book. There are others as just as good on the same topic, but his, his is good. But you'll understand that this is, this is the thing. You are one with the word. Yes. You are one with the word. It's, you know, well, only what we're put in, <laughs> but you are one with the one. Jesus is within. So we are one with this. You're one with the spirit. There's, there's no division. There's nothing. You know, we, we act like we still haven't got access to everything when you've got access to everything. I can go to the Father's throne room any time I flip and want. Yes. All right, I can just march in boldly because he says, come and boldly to the throne of grace. The Father, here I am. Here I am. Thank you, Father. You're one. There is no separation. There's no division. There's one. So good. One with him and one with each other. So if one weeps, we all weep. If one rejoices, we all rejoice. We are one. And Ephesians 2.21, and I haven't got the youngs for this one, Um, Kurt. But Ephesians 2.21 is something that I pray for open heaven. In him... In Christ, the whole structure, and I put in the whole structure of Open Heaven Ministries is joined and continues to rise into a holy temple in the Lord, a sanctuary dedicated, consecrated and sacred to the presence of the Lord. Ephesians 2.21, that is something I pray for us. A sacred temple corporately and individually. But we are so one. Mm 